A dynamic progress bar like we see at the top here is always a nice touch for your multi-step forms. Let's see how all of this works in React. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're adding a progress bar to a multi-step form with React. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Our starter code today is the completed code from my React multi-step or multi-page form tutorial. So I'll have a link to that in the description if you want to grab that starter code and follow along or possibly you completed that other tutorial of mine already. So now we're just going to rename this in the package JSON and it's going to be React form progress dash bar and I'll go ahead and save the package JSON file. And now let's look in the source directory. You can see we have an app.js, and here we're using a form provider. So that means we're using the context API, and we are providing that information to our form. Now it doesn't have to be provided to the rest of the app, but it will be provided to our progress bar as well, because we'll need some of that information to gauge our progress. So in the components directory, we want to create a new component, so I'm going to click the new file here, and I'm going to name this progressbar.js. Inside of this, now I have ES7 React Snippets installed, and there should be a link to that in the description under resources as well, but I can type R-A-F-C-E and then just press tab, and I get a functional component already Create it. If you don't have that, you could just type all of this out as well. Now I'm just going to leave the functional component as is right now and save it after creating this basic outline of the component. Let's go back to that app.js and we need to import that component. So above the form provider, just so it's by the other component, I'm going to import progress bar and that comes from the components progress bar. Then at the end, I'm just getting rid of the semicolon and now that we have it imported, we can use it right here inside of the form provider, just above the form. So we'll have progress bar, and then I'll close out that component and save the app.js. So now that we're finished with the app.js, let's go back to the progress bar component. In the multi-step form tutorial, we created a custom hook, and it's a very simple custom hook. It is just used to make the context API just a little easier to access. So we just created use form context, so we don't have two imports and we only have to have one to use that context. This is going to come from the hooks directory and then we have use form context. Okay, at the end of that, then we can use that inside of our components. So now I'm going to say const and we're going to get the page state. We're also going to get the title object, which we have all inside of that form context. So this equals use form context. Now I'll give a line and save this file. Let's quickly look at that context just so we're all on the same page. Our form context has a title object. You can see the keys are numbers. It also has a page and set page here for use state that starts out as zero. So our pages are numbered. You can see we have a billing info page for the form. The second step is the shipping info page and then we have opt-in. And if I drag over here to the left, you can see the first page of our form, and you can see the word progress bar up here that we have in our div so far. But what I'm going to do is complete the first page quickly so you can see the second page and so on. And here I'll just put something simple, roadway, that's fine. Los Angeles, California, one, two, three, four, five. And now we can go to the next part of the form. It's the shipping info, we can click same, as billing address and then when it's complete we can go to the last page and here's the opt-in page before we would submit. Currently in the code if we click submit it just takes all of that user information and displays it in the console. You could submit that to whatever API you want. That's not what this tutorial is about. We're just working with the form and building this progress bar above. So we want to be able to go ahead and click next to get through all three pages of the form to show our progress above. Okay, now that we have determined that, and you could look over this other information inside of the context if you want, or you could go over that last tutorial where we completed the multi-step form as well. But right now, what concerns us is the title object and the page state 
that we're bringing into the progress bar. Now, ideally, we'll make this a reusable component. So if we make it entirely dynamic, we can do that. So it does not depend on a specific number of pages. So let's first define an interval. So I'll just spell interval here. And this is going to be equal to 100, as in 100%, divided by the object dot keys, and then we'll pass in the title, and this will give us an array of the keys of that title object, and then we can get the length. So we know we have three, so this would essentially be 33 and a third, but now that gives us that dynamic value. Next, let's define the progress that we're going to set in the progress bar. This is going to be equal to the page state, so zero, one, or two, and then, oops, not times, but plus one. So then it would be one, two, or three. And then we'll have our multiplication times the interval. Now let's go ahead and wrap all of this in parentheses. So we'll have another parentheses here at the start and one after interval. And then we can say two fixed. And we'll just use two decimal places because we are going to display this information. And we don't want a long decimal like 33.33333. We just want to stop with two decimal points. We need to calculate one more piece of information, and that is going to be the steps. How many steps are there to the completion? But we're not just going to calculate how many steps. We're going to display them with an element on the page. So it will say step one, step two, step three, and so on. So we'll set steps equal to object.keys, and we'll pass in the title object once again. So now we have an array of the keys, and then we'll map over those. So we'll say step, and we'll also have the iterator here. And then inside the function, we're going to return a div element, and the key will be the iterator. And then after that, we'll have a class name, and this is my own class name. And you could use yours, but I am going to provide some CSS. So if you want to use my CSS, use my class name. It's called bar marker. And then we're going to have the closing div. But in between, it needs to say step. And then inside of curly braces, we'll use that iterator once again, plus one, because the iterator would be one less than the actual step. And now with that complete, we are ready to return some JSX. So now let's get rid of our div that says progress bar inside, and instead we'll have a section element, and I'm going to give this a class of progress-container. Press tab, and yes, it'll close out that section. Now inside of the section, I want a div, and I want it to have a class name of bar marker dash container. And then inside of this div, we're going to display those elements that we created above, the divs that are the bar markers themselves. And now I'm going to scroll for some more room because we have one other element to display, and it's very important. It's the progress element. And it's going to have a class name. So I'll say class name and set this equal to progress. And then it's going to have a max equal to 100, and that's important because we calculated based on 100 above, and then we'll set the value equal to progress as well, and then we're going to go ahead and close out the progress bar, and it will have a closing tag as well, but we won't put anything in between. Let's just save that. Now I'm going to press Alt-Z. As you can see, this goes off the screen just a little bit. So we have the progress value here, and if you remember, we calculated that above. We also based our interval on 100, so it's important to have that value in here in the max as well. And since we've saved our progress, let's drag this over to the left and check out our bar. Now we have step one, step two, and step three, and you can see step one is complete. And now if we go to the next page, step two is complete, and if we go to the last page, step three is complete. So that is the basic progress bar, but we can add some more style to this as well. In most React tutorials, I don't go over the CSS, but in this specific tutorial, it's fairly important because it is a little challenging to style a progress bar. And then also we want to display the actual percentage inside of the bar, and we can do that with CSS. So I'm going to highlight the index.css, then I'm going to press Control-B to hide the file tree so we can see a bit more of it. 
and I will scroll down and we want to start where we have the progress container in the starter code that would be right around line 62. Now that we have that, let's add one thing here to our progress container and that should be a position of relative. After that, we can add just a little bit more below. Our bar marker container looks like it should stay the same. Our bar marker should also be the same. And notice the bar marker is not pseudo classes that are added. So we have is not last child that reads like a sentence. And that means we are adding a border right to any element that is not the last child where it has the bar marker class. And those are our steps. So notice we have a border here to the right of step one, a border to the right of step two, but no border to the right of step three. And we're achieving that with these pseudo classes. And now we need to add some extra styles, something that we didn't have previously. And I did have some of that CSS in there with the starter code, even though we hadn't added the progress bar. And that's what you've already had to start with. But now for the progress class, we want to add a dash and webkit dash appearance. And we'll set that to none, but then we'll also set appearance to none in case that's what is supported. And we'll save as we make these changes to see what happens. And notice it changed the blue bar instantly to this green kind of ugly gray in the background bar. And it doesn't look the same. It doesn't look as good right now, but what we have accomplished is removing those default styles. Now let's set the width 100%. Let's set the height to 32 pixels and let's set the margin dash top to five pixels and save. And now we have a big green and gray bar at the top. And now we need to apply some pseudo elements. So we'll start with that progress class once again, and then two colons, which should indicate it's a pseudo element. And here we'll have web kit once again, progress dash bar. And now inside of this, we're going to set a background dash color, and I'm going to use a light coral. And if we save, we can see our background color for the bar changed. Then a border dash radius. I'll go ahead and set that to 10 pixels. And notice it just rounded the background. The left side is not yet rounded. And the left side is not rounded because we have a value here. This is the empty part. And where we have a value, we haven't rounded that. So we need to also style the value. So this would be progress. Again, two colons. And then we'll have a dash webkit dash progress dash value. And now inside of this, we can say background dash color. I'm going to use lime green, a little brighter green. And then I'll once again say border radius of 10 pixels and save. And now we can see our color changed up here and we rounded the left side as well where the value is. And now we'll use the after pseudo element. So I'm going to scroll up and once again, select the progress class, two colons, and this is the after pseudo element. And we can define some content. Here we can use the attrib function in CSS, and we can grab the value that we have on that progress class, which is the percentage value that we're setting. And then after that, I'm going to leave a space and then a single quote and the percent sign, and now our semicolon, and let's save. And you can see we now have our 33.33%, but it's currently below the bar here to the left. So we need to change that. So let's give this a position of absolute, which is why we needed the position relative earlier when we set that on the container. Now let's set the width to 56 pixels. And then the top position is 53%. And then the left position is 50%. And then the margin dash left, you wanna set to negative half of what you set the width at. So here we have minus 28 pixels. We're essentially centering this with positioning. Then I'm going to make it bold. So font weight, bold, and save. And now we have our percentage right in the middle. So if we remove this margin left, for example, I'll just control X to cut it out and save. You can see it's not quite centered. That's why we put in that negative value 
and then we save. So it's minus 28 pixels. We set the width to 56 pixels. So that is half of 56 pixels. Okay, with our CSS added, let's see if it continues to calculate as we move to the next page. Yes, now we're at 66.67. We get to the last page and we're at 100%. So it's working as expected. And now we have another concern when it comes to a form and the progress bar. We aren't really updating the progress bar with every letter we type into a form, but typically every letter we type into a controlled input re-renders our component. So we could optimize our progress bar to where it would not re-render every time. But let's currently check this, and we could just type in anywhere here. We could just have a console log, just to keep it simple, and just type render here. And now let's go ahead and pull this to a full screen, and I'll open DevTools so we can see the console, for example. We've already got one render, right? But as I erase my name, and then type my name again, we'll see we're getting a render every letter. Everything we type into the form continues to re-render this progress bar too. And the progress bar is really a separation of concern. It should only be rendering when the page changes or if that title object changes. And that title object won't really change, will it? So that is a whole nother optimization concern. And I want to handle this in a separate tutorial because we're using context with it as well. So it will be about using the context API as well as optimizing our components and separating those concerns, even though we're getting some information about the form into our progress bar. And that will be my next React tutorial. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.